Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from, from ministers and, and high-level policy makers now. And uh, now it's time for our keynote speaker, Isabelle Be uh, Bemike. Um, Isabelle is known for her viral TikTok videos, um, which I think she's probably going to show you a little bit of in her presentation. Um, born in Brazil, and in the wake of the 2019 Amazon uh, rainforest wildfires and the Australian bushfire season as well, Isabelle began using your social media platforms to advocate for nuclear power as a solution to uh, climate change. So today, I believe you're going to tell us how, through your, your persona of isodope, um, uh, you tap into social media trends so very effectively to bring nuclear energy to a whole new audience. So I'm delighted to have you here, Isabelle. Thank you so much, Hannah. Can you hear me? <laughs> Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's truly an honor to be here, hearing from all these amazing leaders in, in the world, championing nuclear power. It's very inspiring to me. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about my favorite source of clean energy, but I'm also going to talk to you about courage. And my hope is that when you live today, you have a lot more of that, both clean energy, but specifically courage. I'm Isabelle Vemicki. And I'm best known as my online persona, Isodope. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Isodope is the world's first nuclear energy influencer. And this is what being a nuclear energy influencer looks like. Hey guys, so a lot of you have been asking about my diet. I start my day by drinking pure black coffee. Then I usually work out for about an hour or so. After working out, I eat something a little bit unusual. Gummy bears. Roughly the size of uranium, uranium pellets. Uranium pellets are the fuel used in nuclear power plants. And just like gummy bears, they're super dense. Which just means they're small but have a lot of energy inside. One uranium pellet, roughly the size of a gummy bear, okay you get it by now, has as much energy as 149 gallons of oil, 2,000 pounds of coal, or 12,000 Big Macs. With one of these tiny little things, we can power a house for about two and a half months. That's unless you're being a total idiot, leaving all your lights on while being watching Netflix, blow drying your hair, and using a blender. This means that we can create an insane amount of energy in smaller spaces, which requires less land, which is great news for the environment. It also means that the waste it creates is tiny. If I were to get all of my life's energy from nuclear, my waste would fit inside of a soda can. Ew, 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 ew. ew. Don't ever drink soda. Sugar is like really bad for you. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad this is a forum about innovation because this is innovation in nuclear communication, I guess. And, and this is how I got started. So back in 2019, I innocently opened Twitter to see the news and I saw these horrifying photos of wildfires in California. And later in that year, more wildfires, this time in Australia and in the Amazon in my home country of Brazil. So those photos were a clear sign to me that climate change is here, you know. There, it's not a problem for the future anymore. It's here now. Now, most people in this situation just throw their hands up in the air and they say, you know, there's nothing I can do. But I maybe naively was convinced that I could play a small part in helping address the climate crisis. And as I looked into potential solutions, it very quickly became clear that there is no future, at least not one worth having, without nuclear energy. You know, it's clear by now, and we, we've heard of all these amazing speakers, that we're not going to be able to decarbonize and provide clean, abundant energy for all, not just the few privileged folks in developed countries, without nuclear energy. But there was a small problem. People seemed to hate it. And to be honest, before I learned about it, I was also afraid of nuclear power. That's what everybody said, right? Nuclear power is bad. But why was everyone so anti-nuclear? I mean, after all, nuclear fission is, you know, one of only two technologies that has track record of decarbonizing grids at scale. And it's one of the safest ways to make electricity. So again, why was everyone so anti-nuclear? Well, oddly enough, in part because of pop culture. The China Syndrome, which was a Hollywood movie about a nuclear reactor meltdown, premiered 12 days before the Three Mile Island accident in the United States. So imagine how that affected public perception. We had the no nukes concerts in the late 70s where 200,000 people gathered to listen to some of the most iconic musicians at the time decry both nuclear weapons and nuclear energy as if they were the same thing. And of course we had the Simpsons. <laughs> 
So I thought to myself, hmm, if pop culture is in part to blame for this warped view of the technology, what if I use pop culture to set the record straight and just relay the facts about this technology? So I decided to create an entirely different way to communicate that nuclear fission is one of the safest, the most reliable, and objectively the coolest way to make electricity. And that's when Isotope was born. That video I showed you earlier was seen by almost a million people across social media platforms all around the world. And my content went so viral that I was invited to give a TED talk. Here's a clip from it. What if this technology offers our best hope for the future. A future where wars aren't funded by our addiction to fossil fuels. A future where energy is clean. A future where electricity finally makes its way to the 700 million people on Earth who still don't have access to it. The idea that nuclear power is bad is costing us that future. And it's time to let go of it. Together, my videos have been seen millions of times, and you know, has, it has led to, among other things, being interviewed by Oliver Stone for his documentary on nuclear power, and signing a book deal as well. And all it took was some curiosity, a fresh approach to social media, and a lot of courage. So let's talk about social media for a second. I imagine if I ask everyone here to show your hands, you know, raise your hands if you use social media every day, most of you, if not all of you, would raise, even if you have a fake account that you access. Um, and you know, I know that so social media can sound superficial, but the reality is that's how young people learn about the world. They, and they trust influencers' opinions on products, health tips, and ideas themselves. And while we've seen social media being used for bad, I believe we can leverage these tools and actually use it for good. My videos might seem a little unusual, but I promise they work. Just look at this graph. The green line represents the support, the percentage of people in America who support nuclear energy for electricity. Look at that sharp increase in 2020. Coincidentally, the year I started making videos. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's all because of me, but I am just saying. <laughs> on, on a more serious note, I've witnessed countless interactions at this point of people on social media raising genuine concerns about nuclear power and then after some back and forth with another user, they say they were misinformed and they're now open to it. And most gratifyingly, I've received several messages like this. This is a friend of mine telling me that his sister is now working at a nuclear energy company because of my efforts. Very gratifying. And I think we all here know that we need nuclear energy and people need to understand the truth about it. One of the most bizarre things I've witnessed in my journey as a nuclear advocate has been how many leaders secretly behind closed doors will say, you know, I support, I support it, but I would never say publicly because I'm afraid of the backlash. And I imagine many of you here in this room have heard that before or yourselves have experienced it. So if that's the case, I'm here to tell you this is not the 1970s anymore. Young people are very much open to it and they're waiting to hear from people like yourselves that it's okay to support this technology. So getting the population informed on all the benefits grants license to our leaders to, to pursue realistic decarbonization paths, paths that very boldly include nuclear power at the heart of it. But what can you do? Well, the first step is recognizing and acknowledging that young people need to be at the center of this conversation and decision making. After all, we and our kids have a bigger stake in the future. But most young people don't have the time or the knowledge necessary to, lead, to read long, boring academic papers. So it's also important to identify the young voices who are doing the hard work of translating all of that important information into a language that's accessible, effective, and inclusive. People like Kaylee Cunningham, who's a nuclear engineering student and makes TikToks about, about nuclear power. She has over 100,000 followers. Or like DJ LeClear, who is a radiation health physicist and also makes videos about how radiation impacts or doesn't the human body. His videos have been seen by millions of people at this point. So whenever you come across young people doing innovative communication work, don't dismiss them. Go the opposite direction. Treat them with respect. Help elevate their voices. And help make connections, both political and academic, so can, they can improve their work as well. 
So in 2021, I wanted to move my efforts from social media into the real world. So I created a grassroots effort to save Diablo Canyon, California's last nuclear power plant. This one power plant alone prevents 7.2 million metric tons of CO2 from entering the atmosphere every single year. And we knew that if it was shut down, it was going to be fully replaced by fossil fuels. When I told people I wanted to save the plant, needless to say, I was met with a lot of skepticism. Most laughed me off, some said there was no way I could affect change, but I didn't listen to them and I kept going. And because I had a good social media follower following, I was able to organize a rally to urge the governor of California to delay the closure of the plant. It was the largest pro-nuclear rally in the United States history. Lo and behold, what was considered impossible by many was achieved in part by a young woman with a bold idea. Diablo Canyon will now stay online for at least another seven years. I'm hoping 20, but guaranteed seven. But this is a clear example where if you give young people the right tools, we can get stuff done. I'm just gonna be honest here, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired, <laughs> I guess everybody is, but I'm tired of opening the news and seeing a new wildfire every single week. I'm tired of reading about our oceans reaching high record temperatures, our oceans. You know, I've noticed people, people used to start their day by looking at the weather forecast to know if they need a jacket to go outside, but now in many places of the world, we have to look at the air quality index to know if it's safe to breathe outside. In my own life, I notice I have air filters in every room of my house. But that's not normal, and we cannot allow this to be the new normal. And it's not like we don't know how to solve this issue. You know, we have all the technology. We already know nuclear is safe. We already know nuclear is clean. We already know it can decarbonize grids at scale. We already know it's going to create millions of jobs. So if everyone in this room knows these things, what we need from you now is to listen to the young voices who are waking up. It's to have the courage to not tiptoe around this issue, confront it head on, and declare boldly, the world needs more nuclear energy. I have just one question for you. Are you leaders or are you followers? Because to be a leader is to lead people into a better future with courage. I need you to move beyond the conferences and the spreadsheets and the chit chat. There's no more time for that. We need to make things happen so we can have a livable planet. And the only way we can have a livable planet is if all of you here step up and lead the change into a nuclear energy future. Thank you.